Hi, welcome to another video. So I've just received my parts today from the Open Builds Parts Store in Munroville, New Jersey. I'm here in the UK. Popped down to Parcel Force, paid my £23 import tax. So I've got two one and a half metre rails. They're called V slots. I'll put a link below. So there's various different rails. I've gone for the 20mm by 60. There's 20 by 20, 20 by 40, and 20 by 20 by 60, 20 by 80. And they're V slots. I'll see if I can get a close up later. There's a V slot just in here. I'm going to hopefully join these two one and a half meter rails together. And you get these V slot wheels with bearings you fit. Just had to go to a hardware store because I forgot to order nuts and bolts. And with the various brackets you might see in the background, I've got a stepper motor, stepper motor, bracket, and a bracket to accommodate the wheels, gear, 11 feet of belt. What I'll do, I'll assemble it and give you a demo. Right, that's a, that's a cross-section view and you can see this is why they call it a V-slot. This extruded rail has V's. And depending on the orientation, the wheel sits in there and fits to various brackets. So because of the V-groove in the rail and the wheels, the sort of wheels, once fitted to the bracket, sort of self-align. Uh, they, apparently they don't wear very much. Hoping to join a couple of these rails together. So you can obviously turn it sideways and use one of these slots. It's entirely up to you. Right, well, with a few of these T-nuts, or whatever called, double T-nuts. I'm hoping I can slide these in there. Get a, three of them and join the two rails together that way. Maybe a plate across the top. So that's the company. As I say, I'll put the link below. Open Bills Part Store, New Jersey. And you might have heard of these people, Border Force. Uh, paid £23.84 import tax here to the UK. Well, I'm starting to assemble this gantry plate, they call. So you put the wheels on here. Now these first two wheels you fit, it says put the screws through here, spacers, and then they talk about precision shims. They look like M5 washers. And this Mark Crew on YouTube, he said you need four wheel kits. Now this is one of the wheel kits I've received today from Open Builds. You can see the plastic wheel, two bearings, one nylock, two precision shims, and no screw. So is the screw meant to come with this? I don't know. I would imagine so, but it hasn't. So I had to go and buy my own today from a hardware shop five or six miles away. So I don't know if, when you're getting your kit, I don't know if you write to them and say, either do the screws come with the wheels or not. If not, make sure you get the screws. The video I've just watched by Mark Crew suggests the screws come with the kit. Right, so this is the kit that's in one bag. Now Mark has his wheels assembled, but so I assume you put these two bearings in here, two ball raisers, clip them in, it looks like a, there's a spacer in the middle. So I did that, put the spacer on, tightened it up, and the bearings lock up. And he talks about aligning this with the screw, so presumably one of these shims is meant to sit in the middle, or there's meant to be a bigger one in there, something like that. So what I've done, I've taken one of these apart, one spins freely, that's the one with the shim between the two bearings. Probably can't see the, see the wheel moving. And this other one I've tightened up with a shim on the outside there, shim on the outside there, and it's just locked up so there's no washer between the two bearings. So did the same here, pulled the bearing back out, put one of the shims in between the two bearings, stop them compressing together. And that's spot on now, so I'm gonna strip this down put one of these shims, take this one out of there, take that out of there and put it between the two bearings. And the idea is, you assemble this side first, two regular spacers, and that sits in this V-slot. Well, I'll do a bit more and come back. With the second set of wheels, they've got these eccentric spacers, you can see the hole is off-center 
So you put the second two wheels with these eccentric spacers and line it up to take out the plate. I'll assemble it and let you see. So just before I fit the last wheel, this is one of the eccentric spacers in that large hole there. And you can see it's going to move the screw up and down, so closer or away from the rail. So that's located, so with the groove at the top, that's furthest away from this other wheel. If I turn this, hopefully you see the screw moving in and out. So you put both slots on the outside, slide this on the rail and then adjust them to suit and they just nip up the nuts. Right, so now I've assembled the gantry plate, two eccentric spacers up here, use a 10mm spanner and you can adjust those, so put the slots outward first, slide this onto there and that's it, so that's the most amount of slack at the moment. It slides really nicely. Don't know if you can see the bearings rotating on the video, but there's a, just a tiny, tiny amount of slack. A few thou, you can probably hear it. So you just turn these spaces. So hopefully you get the idea. Right, so that's the gantry plate done. I forgot these uh, screws, M5 by 30 mil. And they're just long enough, a few millimetres, it was probably a quarter of an inch actually, but five, six mil coming through this nylock. The uh, demonstration I saw on YouTube, this screw wasn't coming through the nylock, which means the nylon at the end of the nut it isn't going to stop it coming undone. That's what the idea of that nylon's for. The thread's got to come through it. Anyway, gantry plate, that's the rail, V slot. As I say, all on the Open Builds website. This is their NEMA 17 stepper motor. You get a small bit of loom. What's that, half a metre? And if you're not familiar with how to drive a stepper motor, I'm going to drive this one with the Toshiba driver, so just one clock signal off a microcontroller and you're away. But I'll show you that later. So that's the stepper motor mounting plate. I also forgot the screws for this, but 40 had some. These are M3, I think they're about 15mm. So I'm just going to nip these up and then screw this to this. Also got the timing pulley. I think this is a 20 tooth, 2 millimeter teeth. So 20 tooth uh, timing pulley for this stepper motor and you get two little grub screws. Hopefully I've got a small Allen key for these. And the belt you might have seen in the packet earlier. I've got 11 feet of this timing belt. So it sits around there and I'll show you how it's set up. Right, so I've just fitted this aluminium plate, the motor mount plate, to the motor. As I said, it's NEMA 17 motor. These 10mm screws are head too long. This plate is 3mm thick, the screws are M3, and these 10mm screws too long. I better put two washers underneath, so if you're getting some screws, make sure they're M3 by about 6, 6 or 7mm, no longer than that. So I've taken this off the rail, put two M5 screws through there. I think these are also like 10 or 15 mil long. And then that plate screws onto there. So this is three mil thick, that's three mil thick, that plate. So 10, 12 mil screws, M5. Hopefully you can see there, so those screws, M5 by 12 mil thread and they're just long enough to go through that plate and if you see there they're just catching the nylon so they won't slip loose 
Right, so here's a news flash. They don't tell you why you need spacers inside here. Those precision shims on top of the spacers. They just put them in there and don't tell you why. Well, this is why. Put two screws in there and the rail hits it. So what I've done, taken off the precision shims from the outside, put them on the inside to pull these wheels out and it still hits it. And I've just put M5 washers on the outside. So fortunately I can leave that one there, take this one out, got a more shallow screw and it still hits it. You can see by the time it goes onto this other wheel, it's rubbing it. That's rubbing that screw in there. That's with their precision shim inside, like they say. Uh, what they do list on their site, open builds, have a look. They do a low profile screw, socket cap, so Allen, Allen key. Uh, make sure you get their low profile screws. Fortunately, what I have got, which I'll have to cut down, is an M5 countersunk screw. So I'll have to put that in there by the time it's on the other wheel. You can see just by the time it's tightened up I'll probably have a few thou clearance. So yeah, make sure you've got your spaces in there otherwise by the time you get this mounting blade on but there's not much room, a couple of mill tops. Right, so I've got the motor on this plate, plate's back on the rail. This is the G2 timing belt. So that just simply slots in this slot at the top. Under these two pulleys, so that will run up and down. And when the motor runs, it's going to pull itself up and down. So that's the belt. That's the pulley, two grub screws. Make sure you line it up with the slot. That one. I've screwed this one in a small bit so it catches on the keyway. Then what I'll do, lock the belt, secure the belt, let that find the center, and then secure it. So to lock the belt in position, you get these drop-in T-nuts I don't know, four or five mil, and a little set screw, grub screw. So I'll put this screw in there. I think you need a 2.5 mil Allen key for this one, and a 1.5 mil for this timing pulley. Right, so I'll put this in the slot, and as I screw this down, it's going to lock to the rail and pull this up and secure the belt. I hope you can see the grub screw coming through the other end. Right, so that's the belt, that's the end of the rail. This should sit in there. There we are. And lock that down. I don't want to over tighten it, cut the belt, but we'll see how that does. Put a bit of slack here and a bit of slack up the other end, so that's not going anywhere. Right, so for obvious reasons, they call this the belt and pinion system. So I've locked the belt either end, run this up and down a few inches just to get the belt to centre. What I'll do is pull this pulley out a touch. Right, and you can see the flat there. I'll lock this grub screw. Grub screw, set screw, whatever you want to call it. There's one there on the flat, and then one round here.
There we are, so hopefully you can now understand how this is going to work. That motor is going to pull itself up and down the rail. Fantastic. So this rail is available in half metre, one metre and one and a half metre lengths. I want a three metre length, maybe longer than that. So what I've done, purchased some of their double T-nuts, put them inside the rail, one there, there and there, and just put screws through to lock them together. I'll obviously have to support this. These brackets also on their side. It's sagging a bit because it's not supported level at the ends. Yeah, put these through, screws in there, locks them together. And if I bring down the motor, so this is one and a half meters down, and then I'm on, obviously on a new piece, so everything come, comes out this way to fix them together. But I've got a small gap, in fact, if you see the belt, I've got a small gap there where it's not level. But I don't know, need some plate or welding, TIG welding, because it's aluminium. Don't know, but you don't want to start getting stuff welded. It means you can't do it at home. Unless, of course, you've got a TIG welder, but that's no problem for what I want. So this is the rail. I'm going to hang a solar panel on it track the sun and the irony this afternoon is raining So what I'll probably end up doing, getting another rail, or maybe two, reinforcing the connection, getting another, getting another bracket and sticking another four wheels on to spread the load over the rail. It's been running for half an hour, and if you see that marker there, stops out that pen. And same down here. Got a support in the middle for the join, and it's obviously running a lot faster than it's going to be. It's going to track the sun, so it's going to move a couple of millimeters every every few minutes. What I'll do, try and hang this solar panel on. This is a, a nine. This is a hundred watt nine kilo solar panel. So I just hung that on that long screw, not cut it down yet. Need to get a bracket. So what I'll do, get another gantry plate, another four wheels, and support it with two lots of wheels, but just one motor drive. As I say, probably get another rail too. What I'll probably do is get some rail for the bottoms and box section and a V bearing. 
to bring the bottom of the panel out so it faces up, up to the sun. As I say, that panel is about nine, nine and a half kilos. And this, this is a west facing garden. The sun starts here about half past ten in the morning and comes around here in the afternoon. So it's a bit elaborate, but why not? So at the moment I've got the Toshiba stepper motor driver being driven from 12 volt power supply. So when the sun comes up, it's going to be self-powered. When the sun comes up, hits the panel, it will start moving the panel up the fence. That's the 5 volt enable. If you're not sure how to run this Toshiba stepper motor driver, have a look at my previous videos. I've extended the stepper motor with this alarm wiring. And I've got five, six meters of this alarm wiring. It's obviously no trouble running that over some distance. And I've just got a, um, I've got a clock signal coming from this microcontroller and the forward and reverse direction pin. And that's it. So this is the code. I've got 12,500 steps, one direction. That's the direction pin. 12,500 steps, I'll be not on. One millisecond delay. I'll be not off, so that's the clock. Then after twelve and a half thousand steps, reverse the direction, two second delay, and twelve thousand five hundred steps back the other way, and two second delay. That's it. That's simple. Just in a while one. So that's all you have to do on your microcontroller. So I saw an address somewhere, openbuilds.com, but if I click on the home here. You can see it's openbuildpartsstore.com So just before I go, in case you've not seen my other video uploading data to the internet, you can see that 12 o'clock today had nearly 100 watts off that solar panel. Batteries came up to 14 volts uh, and uh, since 2 o'clock the sun's hidden by cloud. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.